Hey everyone, in the last few videos I've been showing you how to take a 3D character from Blender and send it into AI in order to smooth it out, get rid of that digital sort of look that the 3D renderers tend to give you. What I've done is I've actually gone to the asset browser and added to the human base message. Now these are the ones that you can download directly from Blender, they're all free and you can use these as a starting point. I'll add the female to the scene and once you've added it to the collection, you need to go to add collection and click off instance. And we'll just make sure that it's perfectly centered. The only problem with these characters is they don't come with a rig. I prefer to use ARP, which is not a free add-on, but it's actually a very useful one. It's, it's relatively inexpensive. I think it's like 30 US dollars, but don't quote me on that. Not sponsored by it, just saying it's a really good product. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go to smart, get objects, full body, We'll add the neck, chin, shoulders, add the wrists, add the spine, and then we'll add the ankles, and we'll add the facial, and we'll just move this around, the eyelid. Um, I believe these are the ears. Someone let me know if I'm wrong about this, but I believe it's for the ears. We've got the cheekbones. The lips, the lips are pretty, pretty good there, where they are. Just bring it right there. And then we just need to fix the eyebrows and eyeballs. This, yeah, female left. Right, yep. And we'll just click OK. And that should be it. And then we'll do match to rig. First, we'll need to actually skin it, bind it, and let's see. We'll go into pose mode. That's pretty good. So let's parent the eyes. Bind it. And now, oh, look at that. That's perfect. Just a heads up, I finally got around to starting my own Patreon. Here I'll be releasing tutorials of my entire workflow that will not be going onto YouTube. For instance, this video that you're watching right now on Patreon, it goes for 40 minutes. So you can imagine the amount of information that I've packed into these tutorials. Also, I'll be releasing all of my workflows and at a certain tier, you'll also get access to my private Discord server where I'll be uploading my daily workflows that you can download, use them, and then re-upload whatever it is that you create with it. That way you'll be able to get the rec feedback and be able to work on improving your workflows. Check it out, I can't wait to see you there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna append an actual material that I've created already and then we'll click our character and then just add that material. As you can see, I've got three layers and you can keep adding to these layers if you want, but I prefer to just work with three colors because when it comes to cartoons, it's very rare that you have a cartoon character that has an infinite number of colors. Uh, usually it's, you know, like the primaries, so you've got the skin tone and then you've got two primaries or something along the lines. And then over here, you'll see that I've got a black one and this is where we add our line art. So what I'll do is I'll create a new one and I'll say layer one and make sure that you've got the alpha all the way down 248 or 2048, 2048. Anything lower might be a little bit janky. So with that selected, let's go into texture paint. And then what we need to do is actually switch off the strength. Uh, we don't want it to fade and then our stroke will get rid of any spacing we can actually add a little bit of stabilization not too much but just enough to make the lines smoother and then we'll make the fall off constant is that what it is i'm pretty sure it's constant so that way it's flat so you see what happens we start drawing and then we get a sharp line. Now, because it's 2048, it is gonna be a little bit jaggedy, um, but that's fine, we can work with that. It's not an issue. Just try to get it as straight as you can. You can use the line tool as well. Okay, we'll switch this over to erase alpha. We can erase that, clean it up. Back over to mix. Let's fix up this T-shirt. We'll go to shading and then we'll click on the second one and we'll do new 
layer two. And we'll give it like, what? Darker blue pants, almost purpley. Make sure that's selected, go into textures. And we can actually speed this up a little bit if we get rid of the stabilized stroke and then we'll use it later on to kind of fix things up. It's kind of a simple version of what you can do. So what I've done is, I'm actually gonna load up a different one that I've created now. Now, as you can see with this character, I've used the exact same method as I showed you before, but I went a little bit crazier when it comes to the design to kind of give it that superhero look. Uh, I've also added hair, so this is just using curves, so you can kind of mess around with it. And you can see that with the costume, I kind of did the exact same of what I showed you before. The only thing is that the third layer is my line art. It's quite easy. All you need to do is actually go into that last one and then just start painting with black, basically. I mean, you paint with whatever color, it doesn't really matter because it's actually set to black. Now you'd also notice that I've got line art going around the character and also around the hair. As, as opposed to particle hairs, I use physical hair. That way I can get this line art around it. And the way I did that is using a grease pencil line art. So what I'll do is I'll select the hair, the body and everything, and then I'll actually move this over to its own collection. So in this case, I've moved everything over to body and then I can go into the actual line art and say, all right, I want the collection and the collection needs to be body. I'll turn that down to two pixels or two in the thickness. And the other thing that I like to do is also, I'll activate everything except crease threshold. Crease threshold tends to, yeah, as you can see, it does weird things. And as you can see, it actually blends quite well with the rest of the line art. So it doesn't look like it's a completely separate thing. So this character will be on my Patreon for my supporters on there. Um, that way you'll be able to download this, play around with it, export the files. You can even reanimate it if you want, like change up the animation, uh, paint over it, whatever. And even if you just want to have a look at it to see what it is, like how it is that it's been made up, you can actually rip the shader out if you want. So now that we've rendered it out, let's hop over into Comfy UI. This workflow will be going out on my Patreon along with the female character so you can play around with it. Actually upgraded the workflow that's on my newsletter. While you can still use that workflow, this one's a little bit better when it comes to animating. We're gonna load up our color here. So it, this will just be the flats. Now, the first time you load this, it may be, you may see some red squares everywhere, but if you go to the Comfy UI manager and just add these, you'll be fine. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know the control GIF is actually something else, but I've renamed it to control GIF just to make it easier to identify it. And here you can see that uh, obviously I'm not using LCM borers anymore, or at least not for the time being. And you'll see that I'm using the DPM++ 2M SDE and the Karas. Um, still got a low steps. You can turn this up to 30 and 7 in the CFG, but it's not, not completely necessary. Um, and obviously the video saver. And so up here, what we have is I'm using the animate stills. Uh, I found that with these, this combination, I get a pretty good anime sort of look. It's not 100% anime because it still keeps the look of what your 3D character looks like. So if you can make the 3D character look as anime as possible, it really helps. So now what I've done is I've actually put the original that I've rendered out through Blender and the result side by side. As you can see, it stays pretty close to it, but it does add its own sort of animation flair. This is the 3D version compared to the final version. So again, if you guys want the files that are with this tutorial, they're going to be on my Patreon. This workflow is basically so you can get those cell animations and then put it all together after the fact. And then after that, you can go into DaVinci Resolve, add all the special effects to it, add the sound and everything, and then you've got your finished animation. Remember to click like and subscribe and check out this next video. I'll see you next time.